Crypto. It's your man John Agnew. Back in the mix, back in the fold. You know what I mean? Doing my thing like I like to do, man. I appreciate all the support that you guys have given me, and I appreciate everything from everybody. So listen, I was in uh, California, Hollywood, California, right off Sunset fucking Sunset Boulevard, man. And I sat down with a guy named Slava, and I found him on Instagram. Like I find a lot of my people, man. But with Slava, what stuck out about Slava to me is that he is an adult film producer. So we have to understand some of this content. If you guys view it, please understand that some of the content, some of the stuff that we discuss is kind of choicy, for lack of better terms. You know what I mean? So, but it's an interesting thing. He's interesting as hell, man. You're, and you're, so, you're, 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 so, you're, uh, you're gonna learn a lot. Cause I know I did, hell, I'm a student for anything. So I appreciate you guys. I slob, I appreciate you. I appreciate everything from everybody in the you know, because we're all the same, and we all have these little wonders and these little worries and stuff, even if it's a little taboo. You know what I mean? So, again, I appreciate the love, support, and all that. Comment, subscribe, like, share, follow, blah, 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 blah. But more importantly, listen. It's our job to listen and to learn from one another. Slow time down a little bit. You know what I mean? Slow it down a little bit. Learn how to speak, learn how to conversate, but more importantly, learn how to listen. Let me know what you think. Ah, oh, that's easy. Everything. Yes. Okay, let me get started. You ready? Yes. Bike Dope Conversations, man. John Agnew at it again, where I meet the illest people on the planet, I like to say. <laughs> I'm pretty ill right now. My leg is ill. It's, it's okay. <laughs> uh, well, in, in, a sense of, in a sense of uh, just concrete and who they are you know what i mean yeah. and just and just being the person that you were designed to be not what society wants you to be that's such a perfect way of putting it i appreciate it sir. i'm john it. agnew and this is my man i i where are we at right now Ivan? we're in my house this is the only blank wall in this whole house <laughs> it's we're, only, we're in hollywood uh, Hollywood. Hollywood, where the palm trees are outside it's yeah. sunny yeah and this dude we're like one block from sunset boulevard you guys got to see this guy's house. He's got pictures and all kinds of fly shit just on the wall. Are you from Hollywood, California? Born in Russia. Born in Russia. In 1970. And uh, we came out here in 19... We left Russia in 1978 during the Cold War. And got here in uh, March of 1979. Mm. And so experienced a lot. We lived in Austria for a month and a half. Mm. Lived in Italy for three months. And uh, then eventually came here. It was a, you know, talk about a journey. I'm oh. sure. I'm sure. Yeah, so it was a... But the big elephant in the room to me mm -hmm. was that you do horror flicks and you are a porno producer. Yes. Yes, I've uh, I've been an adult 17 and a half years, I think. Direct, directing. How? Like, how do you get... How do you do you like, know, one year? Like, you, you, you know, what's funny is that all my friends growing up, when, when they found out it did... I was a porn director. They were shocked because I'm so like old fashioned and normal and quiet and all yeah. this shit. No, you're doing what? Yeah. And uh, I'm like, yeah. And a lot of them, they found out I was on MTV's True Life. Wow. And um, it, the funny thing was, it was my first niece's uh, baby shower. Okay. And that episode was premiering on MTV, and I'm like, oh my god, I want to be home to watch this, and I couldn't. Yeah. You know, so I recorded it, and, and then when I got home, man, there were all these messages. I just saw you on MTV. You're right. doing what? You know, right, and stuff right. like that. So it was one of the things just kind of uh, I fell into it. I was working on a TV show. I went to three colleges. Okay. And have a bachelor's degree in cinematography. Do you? Yeah, that was uh, three colleges and, you know, and uh, now I'm directing porn. So, <laughs> uh, but uh, I was working on the TV show. My brother and I went to a local wrestling show. Okay. Big wrestling fans. We went to watch a deathmatch tournament. I don't know if you know what a deathmatch tournament is. Um, is that when they try to kill each other? Pretty much, yeah. With, with the um, barbed wire and, and the, thumbtacks and yeah, light tubes. And, 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 and ladders and shit and all yeah, that? Yeah, all that crazy stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So, we, so we went to um, to a local show. It was a deathmatch tournament. Yeah. And my brother and I loved it. We were like, holy shit, this is insane. Yeah. It's gross because there's so much blood and skin ripped and all right, this right, kind right. of stuff. But it was cool. So I went back to the TV show. Then, like the, the following Monday, told one of the hosts on there, and he was a big wrestling fan. So we took him to the next show. Right. 
And we all met the owners and the people who run the wrestling promotion. Okay. They were a porn company. So that's how we got in to where like my brother and I got in. We do, were helping him with the wrestling stuff and adult stuff. And eventually they hired me to shoot behind the scenes for some of their movies after the TV show was almost canceled. And um, I quickly realized now there's a lot of talented directors in porn. Back then, it was just mostly dudes trying to get laid. Or like that's the first thing that I think in my head. Yeah, yeah, and that that was the problem before. It's like that's why the quality of the work was garbage. Uh, when I when I got into it, most of the directors I was helping out on set they didn't know how to white balance a the camera. They didn't know how to set up a camera. They didn't know how to light nothing. Right. So I was doing all this stuff for them, and then one day I was like, "Fuck this! I'm gonna ask my boss if he let me direct." Yeah. So and the funny thing is, like you know, like sometimes when you wish for things, you think of them as just like a wish, not a reality. No doubt. No, right. And then one morning I get a call. And uh, my boss is like, hey, the director's sick. You're going to direct the scene today. Right on. Oh, I was petrified. I was like, because the first, when you start directing porn, all you're thinking about is like, you're actually shooting people having sex. Period. So how do you step in in the middle of this thing? Go, stop. I need this. It's yeah. Weird. You know, it's weird. It's so 100%. strange. That's, yes, sir. Absolutely. So um, I was so nervous, man. My heart's beating now just remembering how it was. Uh, I was like, Maybe I'll be in a car accident. Maybe I'll have another excuse. But, I, you know, like, I was trying to cope with everything because, like, I was so scared. Right. I get to set. Both performers knew me from previous shoots, and they're like, we're going to make sure everything's done right. Yeah. Don't worry about it. We got you. And, yeah, it was it was stressful. And literally the first few years, like, I couldn't sleep before in any shoot because, like, I'm perfection perfectionist, and I want it done right. Yeah. So I'm always like, okay, what are we going to do? Even though, like, the scenes were super simple. There were no storylines. They were just like, here's some sex, and that's it. Right. Um, but then eventually, it was like, I want to do creative stuff. So I uh, I did a movie called Texas Asshole Massacre. And it, Texas Asshole Massacre. Yeah. Okay. With my, the only girl I ever did in the industry. She was a contract girl of the company I worked for. The movie was fantastic. Um, How got, do you, what, what makes a good porn movie though like when you say that what okay because uh, to me i'm just thinking just fucking and this and that and whatever but i'm sure your perspective is a whole lot different you know that. it a lot depends on what kind of what the view who the viewer is for instance like women and couples they like watching that romantic bullshit yeah right guys obviously want to come in get, get down and go depending on the guy right so to me the sex has to be top-notch you know like you do your fun storyline and i always did like really funny creative storylines right but I always, I would always, I was always told, do your song, get to it quick, and then get to the sex and make sure the sex is good. And don't fuck around with the sex. Don't interfere with the sex. Okay. Let the sex happen. Okay. You know, don't don't overthink it. Don't over direct it. Let these people enjoy the moment because if they're enjoying the moment and they're into it, it's gonna be a better scene rather right. than you like stop. Their directors that don't know how to do camera work, they'll stop you between positions to reposition their camera lights because they don't know what they're doing. Right. That kills the momentum. It kills the energy, right. kills the synergy of the, the, the talent Absolutely. working together. So I would shoot funny storylines, but I would make them short. And since I'm the one editing it, I know what I want. I don't need to shoot the whole take from different directions, the whole thing, and right. put everybody down. Right. I'm going to start in a wide shot. I know what I'm going to cut. So I cut instantly. I'm like, I'm, let's shoot. And I move on past it, and we go on to the sex. Um, so to me... I wanted to do stuff like that, like, like that movie, Texas House Massacre. I had the whole vision in my head already. Right. I just had to shoot it. Right. Um, so I did that movie and man, I got so many offers from big companies to leave my company and direct. And I'm very loyal. Mm. So I'd never left. Um, eventually I left and that was a whole different reason. Right. But um, I I was just having too much fun creatively. Money wise, mm, creatively, it was amazing. That yeah. was my next question. Like as far as like, a budget for a porn movie. How? What are we looking at? Is it between five and ten thousand? Is it? Because it's not like making Avatar. You know what I mean? Right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, especially these is not right. a lot of money left right. in the dog. Right. Um, for instance, the Texas Astro Massacre I did cost eight thousand dollars. Eight thousand. And that was in two thousand four. The company that my movie's competing against for the best comedy, they brought me in to um, to see if I wanted to direct for them. To bring in this big conference room, you know, with all these awards and posters of all the contract girls, big feature company, and they go, "Well, our movie costs us one hundred fifty thousand dollars to make." Wow. How much is yours? I go eight. They're like, "Your movie's funnier with better sex." They gave me a copy of the movie that was going. I was going up against. 
and every contract girl on that scene looked like they didn't want to be there. You're saying every contract girl in that in that movie, yeah. There's there's con there's not many contract girls anymore because there's not a lot of feature companies that are left. Okay. But back then, a lot of companies had contract girls because everybody went. Con uh, the, the girls would get a steady paycheck every week, Damn. and the company would get basically an indentured servant in some ways. You yeah, know, yeah, depending yeah. on the company. Um, so everybody kind of, and the girls would go travel with the company to like, back when it was still lucrative to have adult shops. Mm. So the company would send a contract girl to different adult shops around the country to do meet and greets and signings and things right, like that. so they can recop some of the money. Yeah, right. exactly. The, the, then fans would show up, buy copies of the movie, whatever right. else, the posters printed out. Those days are gone. This is all, now it's garbage. It's like this porn now, it's like a lot of it is so, they just shoot on the cell phone really quick. And move on because I want to make my money now. I don't care about my brand. Yeah. Back then, people cared about their brand. The companies cared about their brand. The talent cared because their last job was a portfolio for their next job. Yeah. These days, talent controls so much of their own content that they could give two shits about burning a bridge with somebody because they, they don't want to burn bridges with their, their members of their whatever clip store that they own. Absolutely. Or custom videos that they do. But they... Uh, so they care about more about that. Man, these days, so many people cancel shoots, like for paid shoots, or even content shoots with companies because they don't care. When they were paying the girls back in the day, or yeah. I guess currently or whatever, yeah. what's a decent pay? Oh, pay, like, like you're actors, like who's, how much are these guys getting paid? Out? Like, Not a lot, you see, this is the thing is like, for instance, like my ex, the only girl in the industry, when she quit the industry, there's this message before social media, all these people are like, oh my God, she must be a millionaire. Yeah. Da, da, da. Because she she shot for four years, that poor girl couldn't even pay her property tax, almost lost her house. I mean, like there's not a lot of money because, on an average, a girl probably make a thousand eleven hundred dollars a for a boy girl scene. That's not a lot. How much? Uh, about a thousand to eleven hundred. Okay. Bigger name girls will make a little bit more. Yeah. You know, it's, I know a girl that makes twenty five hundred dollars scene for so, scene. So so that's on the higher side. Though. That the complete higher side. There's girls who do scenes for five hundred bucks. So who makes more money, the guys or the girls? The girls in straight. And obviously, like the gay male performers and gay porn, they make a lot of money. Um, Why is that? Why is there such a distinction? Because, because I think gay porn still sells really well. Wow. Um, so, and, 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 and gay um, fan base, I don't know. It seems like maybe they're, they got more money. I have no idea. I mean, yeah. They get people richer. I have no idea. Right. But maybe there's less of the porn out there, so they have to pay more. I, I don't know. Um, but girls definitely get paid more in straight porn, um, down to like some of the clips or like one of my best friends, if not my best friend in the industry, Christy Mack. Okay. That girl makes stupid money on the clips. She doesn't even get naked anymore, but she built a brand. Yeah. She's one of a few girls in the industry that I know that did it 100% the right way. Wow. Came in as a businesswoman at 21 or 22 years of age, right. but in two years she was out of the industry, didn't do any more scenes, still making stupid money. Well, what my thing is, I mean, when these women come out the industry like that after so much, you know, so much, for lack of better terms, fucking, right? Yeah, yeah. How is their body worth anything afterwards? If you're coming in 21, letting everybody, you know, do whatever to you. It, it, you know what it is? It depends. Yeah, because there are girls that I know. At 22, their assholes fall out. Woo! Because they do a lot of anal. Yes. And, and But there are girls who do a lot of anal and are still, butthole looks brand new, man. <laughs> And if you're watching London Keys, who's one of my good friends, she's a super hot Asian, half Asian girl. Her butthole looks brand new. And that girl's doing <laughs> double anals, double everything. And, and like, I remember the last time I shot her, I go, what did you do to your asshole? I'm like, she's like, what? I'm like, it still looks perfect. It looks like not, like you can't even put a finger in there. She goes, oh, I just take care of myself. So it's really taking care of yourself. Right on. Taking care of your body. This 22 year old that her asshole folds out during regular scenes, not even anal scenes. It's because she was too young. Nobody took her aside and said, hey, this is how you need to take care of your body. Yeah. And this is what you need to do. And you can't overexert your body. But you seem like you, it comes from a different place with you. You seem like you genuinely care. Yeah. I, yeah. The, and, and, this, and this is, I think. About people. Like, yeah. You seem yeah. like you have, your heart is, like, I can feel it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, But I'm sure there's, there's a whole lot more of people in the world who don't give a fuck about people afterwards. They just want what they need to, you know, like you spoke about the phone. Yeah. And I just want to get my scene, get it out there, whatever, to the people get my money. Yeah. So that world is so taboo. It's like, well, uh. you, get, you get a lot of shitty people. And you know, it's it's been 
um, in the last few years, it's weeded out a lot of shitty people. Yeah. But there's still a handful in there. Man, did I know directors they'll straight up tell the girl, if you fuck me after the scene, I'll get you more work later. What? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Like, but you know, have you ever done that before? No. I've touched two pairs of boobs on my on my set in 17 years. One, because the talent, the female talent and the male talent both know who I am, and they're both like, we're not fucking until you touch her titties. Fine, clink, clink. Right. And the other one was this girl had some kind of valves in her boobs where she could make them bigger and smaller. Get the fuck out so she's like, here, touch it. And I was like, fine, I don't touch tits on side. Okay. Yeah. So I've 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 been with only three porn girls in my whole life. Yeah. One I dated for 18 months. It's not a dating service for me. Um, so when a woman comes home from work and this is your girlfriend, right? And she's been <laughs> working. Hot when she lays down with you, what? Where is your head? What is Ivan thinking about that point? Because I know what I. She would better think. have taken a shower and brushed her teeth first yeah. of all. Okay. <laughs> you know. Okay. So there, there are guys because I'm friends with a lot of the girls. Yeah. And they open up to me. Right. So many guys that date porn girls won't touch the girl after the girl works for a day or two. Yeah. And it, I think it's ridiculous. If you're going to date someone in the industry, you take them for what they are. I yeah. don't understand. It's like it's a job, and. And I always looked at it like this. She's coming home to me. She's not going home with that guy. Yeah. I don't want her coming home and going, oh, my God, like, you know, I love this dick. Or I don't want to hear that shit, obviously. <laughs> and I'm not a jealous person. And that's never... Try shooting someone yeah. you're dating. Yeah. I shot her for years, you know, mm. my ex. So I think with adult, you have to look at what's here yeah. and what's here more than the body. Because... In adult, everybody throws their body around like it's nothing. Correct. Like you're saying, like, oh, all these girls, like, what is their body worth? Yeah. Exactly, because they throw this shit around like, right. it's, like it's someone's business. Yeah. But what's up here and here, especially some of the people are, in the industry are just damaged, you know? Yes, yes, Down yes. to people behind the camera. Right. It's not even just people on, in front of the camera. We're all damaged in some way. Right. To do what we do, we have to have some fucking issues in some ways, you know? I agree. Good or bad. It doesn't make you a bad person. Yeah. It makes you... You were put in a situation that you had to deal with as, as a human being, yeah. and this is how you're dealing with it now. So to me, it was all, it's always been like, that's someone's daughter first, or someone's mom, or someone's sister, someone's wife. So I, I, I never would look down on those people. And same thing went with the relationship that I was in. I'm like, in my head, Ivan, in my head, this is I envision. I, I, I'm seeing you looking at women almost like cattle and shit. Like, this is what I'm thinking. I don't know if it's wrong or right, right. but I'm like, you're holding these chicks up. Like, okay, give me a uh, her. Pretty much. And give me, <laughs> give me, here, here's 200 bucks. Go suck his dick. Yeah. Type shit. Like, yeah. I know, I, and I hope I'm wrong. Like, I really yeah, do yeah. hope I'm wrong, but is that fair? It's it's fair in the sense where it's when there was more DVDs, it was more of a business aspect because, um, for instance, like, I, 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 and I have to actually like explain to like people when they bring up the whole like interracial being and a racist thing because like in porn interracial means doing a white girl doing a scene with a black guy. Okay. And people are like, oh, that's racist to to, to label like that. And some girls are like, I, if I work with a black guy, I will never call it interracial. But none of them know the reasoning behind it. They all okay. assume porn is just racist. Everything is just racist. Step back and peel the onion back and see what the situation is. Right. So. Back then, when DVDs were prevalent, when you're um, when you're picking girls for your movie, your book, big butt movie, big titty movie, whatever it may be, yeah. you know, cream pie movie, which girls do, do cream pies, um, you're picking out. You go to all these different agents' websites, or agents that bring girls to you to take a look, interview them, or whatever. You pick out the best girls that fit the role okay. for that DVD. Right. You know, it's, now it's like with little storylines, you pick out girls the best fits the storyline. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a cattle call. But you're just online looking at the at the, the website, and you pick out. And then what you do is you pick out the girls you like. You call the agent. You go, "What's the rate?" Yeah. And and you know, like a good agent would ask, "Who is she shooting with?" You yeah. know, because she's look, he's looking after the girl. Because girls have guys they like working with, they don't like working with, right. and vice versa. Right. And uh, so it kind of is in some point. I mean, I guess a go see, which is the agents used to bring the girls to the offices, yeah. of the companies. Yeah. That was more like a cattle call because you have like a bunch of a car would pull up. And as a company, we always look forward to it as directors because we're like, oh, shit, you girls coming in to look at yeah. Not because we wanted to, like, mess with but them. that we're sounds like, kind of, like, sick a little bit, though, at the same time. You know what I mean? Like, you know what it is? It's, all, like, I guess in, in mainstream, it would be, like, a casting call, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, it's just, but these girls don't even got to talk. They just lay there and, and take the dick, um, so to speak. So to speak, yeah, yeah. The, well, now, with a lot of storyline stuff, the girls have to have some personality. Like, um, like we for my company... Puba, we've been shooting a lot of storyline-driven stuff. Okay. And some of the girls are like, 
hazy. Yeah. And then others, you're just like, yo, you can't even put two words together. Right. So without having an actual <laughs> go see, yeah. you don't know. You're booking off an agent's website. Right. And if you reach out to an agent and then you go to the agent, can she act? He's not going to say no because right, he doesn't want right, to lose right. that money. Right. So he's like, yeah, of course she can. The girls show up and they're like, oh, we had one girl didn't know her left from right. Right. You know, I'm going to shoot and go take a step to your right. And she goes this way. I'm like, you're the right. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. You know, so so you get a lot of that. But it's also, these people didn't come to be actors. Yeah. You know, that's, they can't, because a lot of them just literally think they're coming to LA to fuck hot guys and make a lot of money. Right. They don't realize, especially if you're young. You're not going to be fucking a lot of hot guys. You're going to be fucking a lot of old dudes because that's the fantasy. Yeah. At least a few years ago, a lot of these young girls would come crazy, in. Yeah. They'd come in from Florida, from Arizona, from Nebraska, from wherever, right? Right. And then they get booked in like young girl, old man scene or like, you know, like older guy scene because right. that's the fantasy. So how much can that woman expect or that young girl expect to make fucking this old dude? Realistically. Um, if they have a good agent, they stick to their guns, like a thousand bucks, you wow. know? But, but there are girls who don't have agents or girls who are... You know, like producers a lot of times would, would pull this like, oh, towards the end of the month, so we could get deals with girls. Because time, rent time. You know, and it's fucked up to think about it, but then you're going, Damn. but but this is business. Yes, yeah, it's I business. Get, yeah, it is you know, shitty, like, but I was going to say, it's, 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 it's business. business and this is like when now girls complain about, oh, companies don't want to pay this much. Companies are fucking losing money now. Yeah. The, most DVD companies, since I got in the industry, probably 90% of the DVD companies are dead. Gone. Yeah. Gone. And these are big companies who are making millions. Disappeared yeah. because the industry struggled, you know, with tube clips and whatever, or with tube sites, whatever else, uh, economy. So, oh yeah, like I was talking about the whole IR thing. So when you're booking stuff, you know, you you're booking a, a hot girl for the box cover, a big name girl for the box, so you pay your extra because back when DVDs were were the pre prevalent compared to there was no internet back then. Right. People would go to the adult shop or website mm -hmm. movie, and they see the box cover with. Beautiful girl. Oh, I want that one. Right. So the box cover would sell the movie. The girls in the movie, without seeing what they're actually doing in the movie, mm -hmm. you you can tell what they're doing in the movie by the title of the movie. Oh, mm -hmm. it's big butt movie. So you know there's a lot of butt stuff. Right. Oil up movie. Oh, you know there's a lot of oiling up stuff. Right. And this is the cast. I want to see these girls in this kind of scenario. With IR, and I remember talking to uh, our sales guy at the at the second company I worked for, and I asked him about the whole IR thing. And he put it in such a great perspective. When I tell people now, they're like, they, they stop yelling racism instantly. Mm -hmm. I'm like, here's the deal. IR so, meaning interracial. Interracial, yeah. Okay. Interracial no means with black guys. It's not because that's if, you, if your white girl's having sex with a Hispanic dude, that's still interracial if you really technically want to talk no, about it. Or Asian it's, guy, yeah. but it's always white girl, black guy. And the reason for that is it's not the company is a racist. Some of the viewers are. Yeah. So what happens is if you put one black guy in like a five or six scene movie, one black guy with one girl, white girl in that movie, when those DVDs are shipped out to the South, to Midwest, to wherever, mm -hmm. around the country, the, 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 the owner of the, um, of the store or, right. or the manager gets it, they look on the cast, look on the back, they're like, oh, there's a black guy in there, it goes into the IR section. Completely. Because, because what happens is, if you don't put it there, you get a bunch of white dudes or whoever want to come in just watch like white people banging yeah and they see a black guy they're like fuck that i don't want that dvd yeah so they skip it so not affect sales yeah so because it was an ir section so he was explaining to me like it just it just sales he goes that's all it is yeah. because there are people my old boss told me that he had a couple of just fucked up he's all like a couple of he was he was doing a lot of charity work with cops and some of the cops were like just give me the movies with all white people that's crazy though. and it was like oh my god but Again, it's a preference. Yeah. It, you know what? It, and it comes down to if it is your fantasy, not saying you're racist or not. If your fantasy, this hot girl, she's fucking a white guy, and you're white, you're thinking of it. That's you. That's you. Yeah. Or if it's a POV movie. What does that mean? Uh, point of view. So you, so the camera is like this. So okay. you never see the guy's both hands. You see only one of his hands and just the girl. So it's almost like like it's you having sex with her. Wow. You know, so, so especially if you're shooting POVs, if you're a white dude watching it, or vice versa, a black guy watching it, you want a body that looks similar to yours. Yeah. You know, so I get that. And when I explain this to people, they're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I'm like, yeah, it has nothing to do with like these these company owners are racist. They might be, but their business. Business, but their business is not yeah. for racist. Yeah. Their business is to make money. Porn is all about making money. They could give two shits who they're shooting, how they're shooting them. 
as if they're if it makes sense. So what was you, when you initially got into it? Like you did, was it all about money for you too, or what were you? No, was never. it the fantasy you were still trying to live out or something? I, I never wanted to be in porn at all. Like it was one of those things that what happened was um, work slowed down. Yeah, and it was something to do. Like I uh, was on a couple of TV shows that were canceled, and then I worked on one TV show. And it was a horrible experience. It was eight days. It was kind of like um, it was kind of like Fear Factor with couples. Okay, uh, called Culture Shock in New Mexico. The worst experience of my life because it was like raining every day. It was like 20, 20 degrees, right. 18 hour days, like stupid long days, you know, in the mud because it's raining and we're in the middle of nowhere. And then um, the next thing I did was I worked on an episode of The Bachelor. Okay. Did you? And it was a horrible experience. It was in studio. I don't know what it was. It was like a reunion thing or I don't know what the hell it was. But it was so um, like um, compartmentalized where yeah. it's like, don't touch this stuff because it's not your department. Don't touch this. Just, I hated it. It was horrible. And um, then one day, this you know, it mm. came upon that like I can <clears throat> I can shoot some behind the scenes yeah. for these adult companies. And I'm like, fuck it. While I'm waiting for other jobs to come, I'll just go and do this. And uh, I enjoyed it. Like first day on set, I was super nervous. You know, even shooting behind the scenes because like again, it's the whole thing. Like it's a whole different world. Yeah. Because right? yeah. Yeah. People are fucking off camera, like right. You're sitting on the couch. A guy would be standing next to you, like jerking himself off to stay hard while having a conversation with you about sports or whatever else. It's a whole different world. <laughs> so you have to get used to it. You have. Yeah. To, if you're homophobic, that's gonna go away fast because yeah. you're gonna be around dicks all day long. You know, like so you better get used to it. Um, so it was one of those things. That it, it just kind of fell into place. It was def the money is definitely not not better than mm. <laughs> than what I was doing, but um, but it helped me. The cool thing is about this industry, especially for in my situation, mm. I've always been kind of like my own boss, even though I work for other people. I could make my own schedule. When I shoot, how I shoot, when I edit, things like that. So that's priceless. As a creative person, where you can dictate your own schedule and when you could be creative, it's beyond priceless. Mm. So to me, that's that's what it was. When I worked on TV shows, every day, seven in the morning, you're on set, right. and you leave at five. So you, right? you really like the creative control that you have. Creative control. And But you got to admit, being around all these beautiful women every day has got to be a plus, too, no? 100%. Yeah, yeah. And, and I have some really good friends in the industry. But let's not remember, because the book's pretty on the outside doesn't mean it's the pages inside are pretty. Correct. You know? Um, and I think that a lot of times people get the wrong con conception of what the industry is especially with um directors yeah directors are actually normal people uh or producers but is that oh you're constantly partying and i don't even smoke weed i do i don't drink i don't do anything you know and people just assume that i'm constantly out there with the girls and man some of the messages you get like oh you must be banging this girl no i and, would think know. that too though and there are and there are directors and producers who live that lifestyle yeah i choose not to because i have more that I'm interested in doing, create. Like, in my opinion, most directors who are looking for pussy shoot garbage because mm. they they can't wait to get done so they could hit on the girl. Yeah. And some of them, if they have a big enough crew, they can shoot some really gorgeous stuff. When but, you guys shoot movies and stuff, normally how long does a movie take? So, the, the how long do the, do the contract people stay on set? Well, how long is the set? You know what I mean? Like, well, okay, so usually, you know, like when you say, like when you say movies, it's literally just like four or five scenes. Okay. So, Unless it's a storyline driven thing, it could take a couple of days. Um, but no production goes over a week, really, you know, like, and if you're doing just regular movies where like, you know, here's some big titty girls and five, four or five scenes, that's just a scene a day. And depending on how elaborate you shoot, it could be, the sh this, this set could be as, as quick as three, four hours. So now you can ten. see, I can see other girls. So the girl would just get work for that one shot when she just showed her top and yeah, do yeah, whatever. And they don't get, they don't get residuals or anything like that. That's why with them <sighs> doing their own clip stores, they have residuals, you know? Yeah. They might not make, see here's the thing, and this is like a double-edged sword. These girls who do all their clip stores, all their stuff, all their cell phone videos, ah, with my boyfriend or guy I met at the bar, whatever, they get that instant money. And it's instant gratification. Yeah. But it's not a lot. You know, if they actually cared about building a brand right. that they could live off for years and years and years to come, right, right, right. without even taking their clothes off if they don't want to, that's how, that's a business. You fucking somebody on your cell phone and putting your clips is not a business. One, you don't even know the legalities of doing it because right. you're throwing shit up there without paperwork or t possibly checking each other's tests, whatever it may be. Right. And that, that content, you throw it up on your tube clip 
on whatever format you shoot it on, it's done. If you shoot it properly with a proper production team, you could sell that content later to a cable deal, to a company put on DVD, put it yeah. on your own DVD, build up a brand of beautiful content where you look beautiful rather than like you just look like a haggard chick like banging on the cell phone, you know? Yeah. Like every other fucking girl does now. Yeah. Like if you go to Instagram, every girl's like, only my OnlyFans, OnlyFans. But what it, oh, it's great. You do your OnlyFans clip store, but you also should have produced beautiful content. And this is where you could, you could, tell a cool story, yeah. get creative with lighting, get creative with your makeup, right. with your with your wardrobe. And there are girls who are just content shooters that do beautiful work like that. Okay. Majority don't, because they don't know any better. They're gonna come in, I'm a star because I'm on Instagram and Twitter and I have 100,000 followers. Those 100,000 followers only follow you because you're showing your pussy online. They could give two shits about you. Okay. I mean, you, know, you know what I mean? I, like, I totally like, understand. You know, yeah. like, if you have all these followers on Instagram, for instance, I was at um, New York Fashion Week a few years ago. Okay. Met a lot of, I'm so funny, they all thought I was a rapper, they all went to like my, I don't do shit except direct porn, but I dress like super crazy, you know, yeah. so they're like, oh, who, who do you direct for? I'm like, ah, I, I mean, who do you rap for? I'm like, oh, I wish, I'm too shy to rap. Yeah. But I met all these super talented um, designers and uh, models, you know, and we exchange content information. I'm going on Instagram and I'm like, why is this talented model or this this designer have like 3,000 followers on Instagram? Mm. And this chick showing her pussy has got like a million. No. Oh, wait, because she's showing her pussy. pussy. Right on. But these people looking at it, they don't care yeah. what her skills are. Yeah. And she's replaceable. But the next girl is going to show her pussy. Yeah. You know? So, uh, but if you build a brand, you can live off that. Yeah. But these girls just like, like, I had to post something on Twitter yesterday because I was just like so annoyed with it. Uh, post a couple of things. It was like one was these girls are posting these pictures of themselves half naked on Twitter, and the next picture is of them with a kid. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you that desperate for attention yeah. of your pussy and that uh, desperate for the people? Who are, oh my God, you're a mom. How about you separate that shit? Yeah. Like because most people who are looking at your pussy are creepy dudes. Yeah. Now they can these creepy dudes will get look at your kid. Yeah. You know, and so you can't even separate the two because Jeez. you're so hungry for attention. the like and that yeah. attention. Yeah, yeah. And then others get pissed off because they're like, my Instagram got deleted. Good for you. You know why I got deleted? Because you don't follow fucking com community standards. Yeah. Sorry. You know, like, that's mm -hmm. the reality of it. You know, if you step back as a human being and stop looking at it, I'm selling my pussy and my titties, step back and go, if I was a regular mom, mm. would I want my kid going on Instagram, downloading the app and seeing? Yeah. I was like, no. This is the problem I have with Twitter. They show everything and anything, and anybody could go on it. Yeah. And people come, oh, Instagram, then don't, don't go on Instagram. Or how about you post some more artistic pictures of yourself? Yeah. Right and on. less like, oh, look, my nipples are covered up. Right. Oh, why did they leave it? No shit, Sherlock. It's still sexual content. No doubt. No doubt. Um, so it, it's one of those things, that if you do it the right way, your account's not going to be deleted. It might because it gets flagged for certain things. But if you build up enough brand, and somebody, they do try to pull you, you can always fight for it. Right. But if you do it all so the right way, you, you might have less followers, you might have a couple of hundred thousand followers, but people actually care about your brand, right. or about your look, right. rather than two million who are waiting for that net, next spread shot of your camel toe. Camel toe. You know, but those, those guys are not trying to like, put money in your pocket. They're not. Understood. You know? Understood. You know? Ivan, take, what does a porn set look like? <laughs> a lot of times, look at this, a wall with a couple of fake trees and uh, the couch with sometimes a plastic on it. I'm sure. Um, in my head, right? <laughs> now, now I'm, I'm sure this is just me from the outside looking in. I'm yeah. not a creep or anything like that, but I have seen porn and shit like mm -hmm. that. So in my head, I'm thinking there's, an, on, this, on the side of the table here, there's a big, there's cocaine. Yeah, definitely not. There's <laughs> ci loose cigarettes and shit. Yes, there's, um, sure. there's a... Uh, weed, for sure. Weed, yes. yeah. And then I'm thinking there's like uh, bottles of water over here. <laughs> and then over here, there's, um, you know, some kind of Jameson whiskey, whatever you, whatever you want to do, something like <laughs> right. that. And then I think there's also uh, like Vaseline and shit over That's here right, too. Right. Douches and animals. But yeah. Ugh, douches and Baby wipes, most important thing, baby wipes. But so is that, so in my head, again, so does somebody get to, you, you okay, my man's got his, ha got his hand on his meat, right? Yeah. And he's ready to rock and roll, but he's talking to you about LeBron's 35 last yeah. night, right? Then right before you say, okay, let's come action, does he do a line or some shit and goes, no. goes to work? Not supposed to. Um, I, I mean, I've seen it done on sets before. Right. But, but here's the thing. Okay. When you're doing, when you're shooting porn, yeah. you're signing paperwork. 
So you have to be sober for that. Okay. And most, hopefully all companies now, this is where the clip store thing comes in, where these fucking people don't do their proper stuff. Mm. Companies will do a video disclaimer. Sometimes before, but definitely after the scene. The girl or the guy stands up with their ID. Some companies, like browsers, they got their shit on point, man. You're filling out paperwork? You're talking about B-R-A-Z-Z? -Z. Yeah. Okay, okay. You're doing the paper? Because I, I have friends who direct there and I've helped on set and stuff like that. Okay. And, man, paperwork filled out. They record the whole fucking thing. Mm. Them filling out all the paperwork. And then signing on camera. Wow. And then holding it up and doing the disclaimer before. What are you shooting today? You you, you comfortable wow. doing this? And then after the scene, they do the exact same thing. They mm -hmm. do a whole video disclaimer. Holding up the check. I got paid this much. Yeah. This is my name. That's how you do it. Because now the liability is gone. But one of the questions is, do we offer you drugs or alcohol on set? Are you under the influence of drugs or alcohol? No. No. But everybody doesn't run their ship like that, no? No. And a lot of the girls probably fucking lie too because we don't know what to do in the bathroom. You know? Yeah. So it's, you can't follow someone in the bathroom because that's privacy, you know? So you hope they don't. Like, I've been on sets years ago where girls will go to the bathroom every couple of minutes. Yeah. And we all know. They come out fucking smelling like alcohol or little fucking... We had one girl like literally looked like she floated out of the bathroom like, wow. this bitch is fucked up on something. But we can't prove it. <laughs> okay. You know, so what do you do? Right. You know, so with these video disclaimers, um, you shouldn't be doing these things. One, because if somebody's inebriated, you don't know what their limits are. Mm -hmm. Especially if somebody's high or drunk and they hurt themselves during a the scene and they keep going because they can't feel it. That's dangerous shit, you know? Wow. Have you ever been sued or anything like that? No. No, there's been companies of, that, that um, of talent try to sue. You know, because sometimes you'll get a girl, like years ago, there was a girl got in the industry that tried to pull, that she was kidnapped. And her agent forced her to do this stuff. And these companies forced her to do this stuff. Well, she's had a lot of companies that did video disclaimers like we did. Mm. You did a video disclaimer, bitch. Yeah. Nobody did anything to you. And her whole thing was she wound up writing a book. Okay. Tell all book about the end of the show. She was only only for a few months, but her her shit fell apart because she said her agent kidnapped her. Mm. And he was holding her hostage to shoot the scenes. Yet she went home like two or three times during her whole stay. So why did you come back? If you went home, he wasn't kidnapping you at home. Right. So her her lawsuit fell apart. But there are people have tried like talent. But not many. That's crazy. There was a girl a few years ago. She decided to. She left the industry. And she decided to become a comedian. So she reached out to all these companies trying to get her content pulled off the internet. Yeah. She reached out to us. I never filled out paperwork with you guys. Yeah, you did. You did paperwork. You did everything. Because I know because my partners are so strict on content. Even if I forget to do paperwork, they're like, "We're not putting that scene up unless we have paperwork." Right. So the scene was <laughs> up. I'm like, I know. Because my partners never even put it up. So mm. she tried to pull that stuff with a bunch of companies. And um, if you do your stuff properly, you don't have an issue. Years ago, um, FBI would show up looking at paperwork. This company worked for Anabolic. Dude, they were so strict on their paperwork. We, as directors, producers, mm. we wouldn't get our final check until we turned all the paperwork in. For the whole movie but you guys get residuals and stuff from the movies that you make no the, the, um you, guys, you no. guys don't um well i own puba yeah Cole and puba so we get residuals because we do websites for the okay. girls okay okay uh so that's the only that's the only way otherwise no um the only company that did as far as i remember the two companies anabolic and diabolic they used to have this deal with directors where after i think 10 movies that you direct for them you get a dollar per unit sold and back then dvd sales were fucking huge yeah. so that's besides your salary that you already made i mean like i heard of a guy getting a six month bonus of ninety thousand dollars okay because that's when sales were really dvd sales were really so it doesn't crazy. seem like there's too much money in this industry not anymore not anymore so not, not hell, we're in hollywood right yeah and you live here yeah this ain't cheap this is a i got this as a foreclosure it's probably because of the ghost upstairs yes yeah, so i've had this place since uh 97 so <laughs> I got his foreclosure, so that's the only way I could afford okay. to live. Because like the, the unit couple doors down, holy juice of what they pay. Because like there's a condo mini I'm just opened up over here, and I think one bedroom is like four thousand dollars to rent. That's ridiculous. For one bedroom. For one bedroom. Wow. Just to live in Hollywood. That's stupid. Mm -hmm. I rent a place in Vegas, a house. It's a five bedroom, three thousand square foot house, eighteen hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. When I first moved there, it was thirteen fifty a month. 
in a nice area. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Here, unit two doors down, it's almost $3,500 for a condo in Hollywood. Wow. Um, so, yeah, it's expensive. But why Hollywood, though? Like, why'd you end up here just because you Because my parents live next door. So, okay. so what happened was I was going to film school, and um, this unit was going up for foreclosure. The, the, okay. the people moved okay, out. Okay. So it was one of those things, like, I cashed in uh, all my credit cards, my grants, uh, for whatever loan money I had left over, mm -hmm. and they just put a down payment on this place. I got you. And it was... Yeah, I mean, like, if I didn't have this this low mortgage i wouldn't be able to afford a place in, i still can't afford a place in vegas now but um it would just be a lot different you know and uh so that I, I just got lucky so with the but it is with the stigma attached to like hollywood and stuff like this like this is from the outside looking in for me like this is i'm going to talk to a porn producer who lives in hollywood yeah like it just goes right, right, right. you know what i'm saying <laughs> you just start like oh all of a sudden <laughs> yeah. right, right right um you, you know i think even in mainstream, you know, like I remember a few years ago, they were talking about like the Directors Guild of America. Okay. The average director at Directors Guild of America, the average director's salary for the year was eight thousand dollars. So it gives you an idea. Yeah. You got these rich that make millions, but there's so many that are broke that the average is only eight thousand a year right on. for the salary. So you you know the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, so right. so to speak. Um, and that's how it is an adult. Like there's yeah you know the companies um, the people that do great to do you know retirement type of money mm. people that own like big internet companies why then you 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 have a pretty good hold and you're oh, on what's going on yeah and i like your conversation uh and everything like that so you why don't you just like go into like the what so adult and there's adult and then what's like the regular films like what do you call that like like the mainstream movies yeah mainstream movies like what what like why don't you not would you not happen to off up into that you know what i mean i i would love to you know like my mom was always asking me like when are you gonna go back to regular movies regular movies and i go square hey. square movies square movies <laughs> <laughs> oh like the day somebody pays me enough yeah. money where i'm comfortable and i know this is gonna lead to more stuff okay i'm down um i just know what mainstream entails and uh because i worked in it um, oh and you know like before I got in the adult, I worked on TV shows and I worked in on feature films and I never did the creative part. Okay. We did our own movies right, and documentaries and we were doing our own creative stuff. I was doing all the lighting, camera work, co-directing, all this stuff. So when you do your own stuff, you can, but it's your own money yeah. and your own time. Um, and trust me, there are people that reached out to me wanting to, to direct music videos, put a reel together, do that. I don't have time. I don't have time to put a reel together. I finally directed my first music video and it was, uh, right before this shit happened, literally the day before this shit happened. Okay. Um, so I would love to direct music because I would love to do other stuff. Right. It's just at this point, what would happen to say like, you know, somebody offers me a directing job. I would have to go to do this feature or whatever it may be and put aside my actual money that's coming in. Right. You know, so I can't do that right now. You know, okay. like, you know who can do it? Stu student filmmakers can do it. Right. People that live in the house with three other people and, and, and their bills are super This low. is real life for you. This is real life, exactly. Yeah. So it's hard to step away from real life to do other things, especially when you get older. You're just kind of like, okay, I'm comfortable and I enjoy what I do. I want to do this other stuff, but when will be the time? Oh, yeah. Or it. enough of a paycheck where if that paycheck stops, I'm still okay surviving because I just put all my actual money mm. that I'm making aside and um i'm very loyal like i'm loyal to the company that i call on Puba, and i'm loyal to to a lot of the girls that we do sites for i'm very loyal to this company alterotic with, with the tattooed girls that uh um the network of tattooed girls right so i enjoy what i do yeah, you know and good, um that's so that that's that's the part that's just like you know I like that bro. once you enjoy what you do it's not a job right if you and you you love getting up in the morning the day you wake up in the morning and you're just like fuck i gotta go to work is a day of like, holy shit, this is not working out. Right. Some people don't have a choice. Right. And I get it. I had a choice. And my choice was keep doing this or try to get back into mainstream. And um, right. so yeah, there are days that I don't want to shoot certain people, but it's way better than most jobs. Yeah. yeah so yeah, when you, um, what happened to your leg? I didn't ask you about your leg. I didn't even know what the hell happened. So um, what happens is when you're a workaholic and you don't take care of yourself okay. and you have diabetes, um, oh, wow. So I had a, I had a, um, I had a really bad flu that came on, and literally the same night that happened, I was still at the studio. I banged my toe really bad. And usually when I, 
like her, with diabetics, they have to look out for their feet, really. Like, I mean, that's the biggest problem with diabetics, their feet. Okay. Because you have no circulation, yeah. or very little circulation, right. so you have no feeling in your feet. Correct. So you step on a nail, you, all kinds of infections, all kinds of stuff. So I've had worse wounds that happened, and I would take care of them, and it would be fine, it would right. take a couple of days to heal. This time, I had with the flu, and my leg, and at first I thought I had, it, you know, like I was... Dude, I was sitting here sweating and shaking because I was going through this crazy, crazy flu and trying to, to, to take care of my toe. And then um, and then eventually, man, it was, it, after like almost a week, it got so bad, my foot swelled up, skin popped on top of the foot. It was really, fuck, man, it was so bad. And, uh, and, and it was just, the pain was so, so horrible that luckily my parents live next door, man. I crawled upstairs to get a change of clothes called my mom i was like crying i was like very suicidal um mm. and uh if, if i had a gun psh, it'd be a different story i don't have a gun i barely have knives yeah. so <laughs> that was gonna happen those knives are messy <laughs> uh, uh i guess a gun would be messy too yeah. but um you know i was just like my, my parents and they just thought i had a flu because my mom would like bring me food over on the balcony and i would come and get it and stuff like that okay you know, and, and they didn't know i wasn't eating i couldn't eat i literally couldn't hold anything i just wouldn't go in my mouth Sturcy as all fuck. Right. Just drinking, 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 drinking. So when I went to the hospital, the, these are the things. Well, the flu didn't even even talk about. My diabetes was out of control. The infection was really bad. They said like if I waited probably another day, half a day, to cut my leg off it, because it spread up to the knee. From your foot. From from just the toe. Yeah. Because what happens when you have diabetes? Man, that shit spreads fast, and it heal it takes so longer to heal. That's why it's taking so long to heal. Um, wow, okay. And um, my kidneys gave out. My kidneys were at 30%. Gee, where? So I was on dialysis for the first week. Man, it was, you know, all kinds of painful, painful shit. But, you know, like, the whole experience has been positive in the sense where, like, family got closer together. Right. I learned a lot about myself, um, a lot about my friends, good and bad, you know, mostly good, mostly great. Um, so... Now, like the reason I have this big hole in my leg is because they would just cut and remove the infection, and and this thing that's attached to my leg, <laughs> it's a, a wound vac. So it's inside my leg, sucking out oh, all the. It's making my all the, stomach hurt. That shit is crazy. Can you feel it in there, sucking no, the shit out? No, 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 because um, all the nerves are, are like not exposed anymore. Okay. For a while, um, oh. I was actually supposed to check out like three weeks after, three or four weeks after I got into the hospital and um and they would like open up my leg and they would just look for for things and and i remember the day man i was already doing physical therapy and i remember the day where the the nurse practitioner this this amazing woman mary alice and this doctor dr siegel who's they're fantastic man they oh. so they they were like they were always work on my leg mm -hmm. and then one day they squeezed my calf right because the legs open so you got all the meat and whatever and i never looked because i'm squeamish and they started squeezing my calf, right? The pain, I was like, oh my, what are you guys doing? And because you don't, I'm not looking, so I'm just feeling. And they're like, you have an extra, an, a extra pocket with pus. And they were squeezing and pus was coming. Oh, wow. So they found a new infection. Mm. So they're like, oh shit, you have a new infection. We have to cut you right now. Oh. I'm like, what? They're like, we'll numb it. But we're going to have to start. And, I'm like, and they're like, get that knife. And I'm like. Can you call it a butterfly? Don't call it a knife because like anytime I hear knife, I'm thinking right, right, right. Butterfly right. just flies in and flies away. Right. And they're right. like, okay, fine, bring the butterfly in. Right. So they started cutting. I didn't feel it. All I felt was the cold of the of the blade, right? That's crazy. Man. And uh, and then they're like, look, um, it's too deep. We need we. It's not fair to you to cut more on at your bedside, let alone how messy it's going to get. So we're going to set up another surgery, surgery number seven, mm. and. Uh, and then they're like, your bone's infected too. So I'm like, oh my God, if the bone's infected, because I'm either going to cut off my leg. You know? right. So now I'm freaking out, even though like I've been super positive and I'm still being positive. And, um, and it, it winds up that they, they, they originally it was like cut up to here and they cut up all the way to the knee. That's why like now I have it all the way up to my knee. Uh, and when they did the extra cut, they opened up a nerve. Oh, man, let me tell you the worst, worst pain I've ever felt. Because every day, Every nurse had to do a wound uh, dressing change. Okay. So they pull out all the all the sponges out of there and put new ones in. Uh -huh. the, up here, there was a nerve exposed. Dude, anytime they pulled the stuff out or put new stuff in, 
that because you don't know when it's coming and the shooting pain your whole body yeah. instant sweat at one point there's one nurse who wasn't very careful with, with doing it my body shook and i kicked a straight put my shit into her mm. and I'm, like, I'm so sorry um and then the nurses were afraid to even pack it him oh. because it was so much pain yeah and then the doctors get mad at them but they're like we don't want to hurt him yeah because like i would ask to hold a pillow even though like i'm great with pain but this was like uncontrollable because it's hitting a nerve and yeah. it's cool starts at the toes all the way up to your head yeah. instant pain and instantly goes away yeah. but it's instant pain and i would wow. hold this pillow through the whole process and when they would take the pillow off this whole area soaking wet from sweat mm. just this area because i'm holding it so tight mm. so um they're like we're gonna have another surgery and what we're gonna do is we're going to either trim that nerve i'm like is that healthy like am i, am I supposed to have nerves there right because nerves yeah. and nerve damage yeah. and they're like well we're, what we're going to do is we're going to put another wound vac here so you're not getting daily wound changes you're getting it every three days but we, you're going to have two i had like two two of these tubes coming out to two different wound vacs that were like this big this one's small this is like a portable one okay. those were like big and sucking all your shit out and um then it was fine but still when they would change it every three days Dude, I was dreading it. I'm like, look, like, I'm like, okay, this is the day, and like, it would ruin my whole day. I would try to sleep right, right up to the point that it happened. Um, so now it's a lot smaller, and that's the, um, um, you like now. When are you going back to work though, or are you? I work. I'm working on the computer. Oh, because you're editing and all yeah, that. Yeah, I'm now. editing as much as I can. Sometimes mentally, I'm just like out of it, you know, cabin fever, and then I've always been in a positive mood, but then recently it's just been like. I just need to get the fuck out, man. Like, I see yeah. just my parents every day and then hers every three days. Um, but that's it. Yeah. You know, and uh, I had so many people in the hospital. You stay positive because you're constantly different nurse, diff different uh, uh, doctors mm. coming in, people visiting you. So you're constantly, like, literally just nonstop cycle of people. So you see new faces. You could shoot the shit with them, make jokes. Yeah, yeah, I know. And now you're just like, in the room, you're like, okay, well, I'll go watch something on my cell phone, watch TV or edit or... What you know, like you know, and I try to walk, but I walk here, walk up and down the stairs, trying to get. I got a straight. question for you. I, mean, I just thought about something. Mm -hmm. So when you talk to people and they say, "Hey, I'm a firefighter," and this guy says, "Hey, I work. Um, I'm a manager at Qdoba," and they ask you what you do, do you just right away just say, "I'm a porno producer," or like, "How does your?" Yeah, uh, you know, um, I'm a director. Like, I'm like, depending who it is. Yeah, you know, like. If like it's an older person, I'll just say like I direct and I edit, and usually they leave it alone. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, if they're like a younger person, like at, at the hospital, everybody knew what I did because there was one nurse. Yeah, that he, he told everybody. He, he told everybody. Yeah. Because we were good friends, and he and the new nurses would come in. I had a nurse. Yeah. Dude used to be in porn. Right yeah. before I got in, I'm like, he's like, hey man, we used to, we like we were coworkers. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, I used to shoot for this one company. Oh my God, how weird, you know, yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's been like 20 or some years for him or close to that. So, but uh, yeah, you know, it depends on the person. If they're younger and still seem like they're kind of standoffish or religious, or whatever, maybe I, I just keep it basic. I shoot camera and edit. <laughs> but for the most part, I'm like, I don't, you know, I, I have right. nothing to hide because then it opens up conversations that are very unique i'm sure you know, and uh not about good it. questions people ask and uh what was this one of some of the strangest shit you've seen on set um i i've seen a lot of gross shit i've seen assholes fall out um i've seen uh girls like puking in each other's mouths um what like because that's the because, set that's be, the scene or because, just... because back then it was like a circus show you yeah know, like years ago like... it was scenes where we're a, a lot rougher um it was like it was like which company's gonna do which company and certain right. things you know and the first company worked for extreme associates it was more about not necessarily making spankable movies yeah. making movies that stand out and uh, we had a contra girl that would throw up after every scene and eat it it was disgusting it was especially if you're one of those people that wants to smell puke or sees puke or hears puke you get yeah puke ish <laughs> yeah 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 so, you know, it, it, there'll be times you were shooting and you're going like this, you know? I've seen a girl by accident eat poop. Didn't realize she was eating poop. <laughs> and you're like, oh, did she just really do that? So, oh, she did. I, so when you get to shoot and stuff like that, is are you really like, okay, well, I'm okay, stop right there, pause or cut yeah. right there, and I'm going to go up under the bed or whatever, or whatever it is, and I'm going to watch this guy's nuts 
it just you know de de depending on the scene yes um that's if, crazy if, if, if you're a good camera guy like with me i pride myself on a lot of good hand hand camera work you never stop you just roll especially if you work with certain male talent or female talent mostly male talent that you work with all the time uh -huh. it's almost like a dance you know where to be and they know where you're gonna be okay for instance like if i'm shooting a wine shot the guy is fucking the girl he knows to open up to me right but sometimes guy needs to go faster to to keep his edge or whatever mm. so i'll go up to to the girl's face let's say or boobs or whatever and he knows he doesn't have to open up anymore he could go and just we we'll call it me time just just fuck the, the hell out of the girl me time so so this way it helps him get in his edge they're, they're enjoying themselves more because they're not like opening up yeah. and then you just go back so so it's like a dance you do with sir like this guy sasha who owns alterotic him and i've shot together for 16 years mm. you know and, and he owns a company he's a hall of fame performer so he's really good hall of and, fame there's Hall of Fame porn. Yeah, there's a Hall of Fame. Bro. I'm actually been eligible for a couple of years, so I'm hoping to get in this year. I don't know if I'm going to even go to accept the, the trophy because of this, but um, yeah, he's a Hall of Fame performer, and and with him, we sh I probably shot him like maybe 500 times. If but we spoke of Brad Pitt earlier. Yeah, right? Brad Pitt is as cool as a fan, and right, all that kind of stuff. Yes. So what? How can? Uh, but De Ni I guess De Niro is no Brad Pitt, or vice versa. Right. 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 So. When we talk Hall of Famers in the porn field, yeah, what are we looking for here? You know what I mean? Like, what is, is this I, I, guy? It's longevity, man. It, honestly, That's what I'm going to say. He bagged the most chicks or something? or is It's, it... uh, from what I was told, you have to be in the industry for 10 years doing your craft to be eligible. Okay. And then, like, AVN is the one that does the, the Hall of Fame. AVN, yeah, that's the most And, um... And then they, I, you know, I, I think you have to kind of apply to be in the Hall of Fame because mm. that's what I heard. That you have to like send them a letter or whatever else, and then they sit and vote on it. I'll be honest with you, there are people in that Hall of Fame that they shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame because they're fucking shitty people. Yeah, they're, they're in the Hall of Fame because longevity, right, strictly right. longevity. It's not a moral test. It's not a moral compass whatsoever. Um, but there are people in there that I'm like. I actually told somebody at ABN a few years ago when the guy was asking me, are you eligible? I go, yeah, I've been eligible for a while ago, but I'll be honest with you. Mm. There's certain people in there that I don't want to stand next to. Yeah. Because I consider myself a decent human being. I treat people with respect. I'm here to actually put together a good product. I'm not trying to drug anybody. I'm not trying to force myself on to anybody. I mean, you have fucking people in the Hall of Fame who did that shit. Right. And everybody knows it, and you still let them in just because they're eligible. That's stupid to me. Right. You know, it's like... Like, for instance, like the pro football, they, Terrell Owens, took him a couple of years to get in the Hall of Fame. Right. Not because of a shit on the field, because he was amazing. Yeah. Because he was an asshole. Yeah. So people kind of like held back on that. My problem with porn is it doesn't police itself. Okay. I wish porn policed itself. Some producers, directors, and companies do, 100%. They want you to book from certain agents who are scumbags. Right. They want to uh, book certain talent who are <clears throat> scumbags. But for most part, they don't because it's still a business and for some companies money over matter you know like right, in a sense right. we're like if if this guy's an asshole or he's like you know known as a woman beater or whatever else <sighs> but he's going to give you a deal you're going to book him which i think is ridiculous yeah, i put that's awful. i put people on my no list because i just know what kind of people they are you know um years ago i was actually driving to a shoot the first company i worked for and they booked this um male talent that i can't stand because he beats girls Damn. And I canceled the shoot. I got to the office, they're like, and I go, who's the guy? They tell me, I go, shoot's canceled. I'm not putting one penny in that motherfucker's pocket. Yeah. And if more directors and producers did that, hey, get out of there. <laughs> She's trying to get into your backpack. Mm -hmm. um, so if more companies did that, I think the industry would weed itself out. If more agents wouldn't let their girls shoot with certain directors either. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't, you know, it, it, what are we talking about here? If Hollywood can pull shit that they, they pull right. with women, with men, whatever else, porn is such a lower tier compared to Hollywood, and you're dealing with a lot less morals than in Hollywood, right. then you're right. going to get people who have less oh, morals, no doubt. And who don't don't look at that woman. And then at the end of the day, like if that chick is flaky or whatever else, sit back and understand maybe what she's going through. Yeah. Or that guy. But nobody gives a fuck. But nobody gives a fuck, and especially right. when it comes, you know. Also, a lot of agents get jaded. You know, um, a friend of mine texted me a few days ago. She goes, "You should be an agent. You probably get girls with a lot of work, and everybody loves you." And I go, "But you understand how hard it is to be an agent in this industry? Because, yes, there are agents that are amazing. There are agents that are kind of scummy. 
but but the loyalty is not there. Yeah. Like like the the major looks at the girl as a piece of meat to make money off, right. and the girl looks at the agent as a stepping stone to something else. Right. You know, so there's no loyalty there. I know so many agents. The, the girls leave their agency or vice versa. These girls owe so much money to the agent, and I've heard girls still telling me shit like, "I owe my agent eight hundred bucks. Why the fuck am I gonna pay him? I'm not with him anymore." Are you kidding me? That's his money or her yeah, money. Right, right, right. But right. that's the mentality. So if they're willing to burn bridges with an agent, why don't they burn bridges with anybody else? Yeah. You know, so so it's um it's tough. It's this industry has so little loyalty. And I've noticed that yeah. from my hospital estate. I've been more than giving to literally anyone I've worked with, you know, like from my time, money, I'm sick, I'll go to shoots. And the people that I expected the most from <laughs> the least. Yeah, yeah. And goes. the people that like I never expected walked into my hotel uh, hotel hall. It's not like a hotel room. I guess it was there long enough. Yeah, uh, right. Like you were in exactly uh into my hospital room and yeah. I was like, Whoa, you're here. Thank you so much. Like I didn't expect it. So um and I, I think a lot has to do with maybe with people that went through a lot so they appreciate it. Right. When you treat them as a human being. I remember I you were doing a live on Instagram and you were in the hotel oh, hotel I got to like this <laughs> yeah. in the hospital hotel studio sign right yes. and then you were like I said don't forget about the podcast she's like come do it now man you didn't know that I was a moon away yeah you know yeah yeah I, mean? I didn't know yeah I was like dude that would been great like if I could look at my would been do the podcast while they're changing my shit so you could see that my been, tendons and all that um, bone and all that God damn <laughs> but I'm saying that to say I wish I don't, that's a big graphic, but I'm saying in terms of I I just appreciate the fact that you were actually open to me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and I appreciate the fact that you let me into your home and share your story because I believe what I'm doing is just bridging more people. You know what yeah. I mean, and just trying to and because you seem comfortable and confident in who you are. Yeah, yeah, and that's the bigger scope of what I like to think I'm trying to do or right. giving giving doing my share to the into the universe. You know what yeah. I mean, just giving it whatever it's worth. And just meeting that many more people and and uh, just bridging those gaps, you know what I mean? Because I've always wanted to sit down with someone who did porn, uh -huh. not you know, because when we're younger, we just want to be a porn star, right? Right. right, right. Everybody wants to be a fucking yeah, porn yeah, star. Yeah, yeah. I got. I want to be a. If I can do anything, I'll be a porn star. Okay, well, you go, go drive trucks instead. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but to sit down with the producer and someone who actually has the eye for that, and you take your craft very seriously, I respect that, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? I really do, and that's awesome. And this is. And I like to say I, I gain, because from us to talk, like you let me into your world, so you give me a little bit of your life. So I like to say I gain a friend, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. To a certain degree. Right. You know, and uh, I appreciate it, man. I really do, man. How but, but you know, like stuff like this is what, um, that's why I enjoy doing these things, because it gives a different perspective yeah. to, because like all these podcasts or interviews or whatever, they, they interview porn chicks. How many fucking different stories is the, uh, the uh, porn you gonna tell you? It's right. gonna be all similar. Whether it could be a whole fake story, yeah. it's gonna be like, oh, I love to wake up in the morning, masturbate, and think about bullshit. Yeah. None of you wake up in the morning thinking about your fans masturbating. Right. That's a story you tell social media fucking mouth breathers. Right. You know. So, so I, I have a friend. Her name is Danny Daniels. She's a big name in the industry. She's okay. got a big podcast. She's doing a lot of mainstream stuff. So her and her husband posted this thing that do do podcasts and she's very popular. Okay. Oh, I'm doing a podcast with this one, one with this one porn chick. So I commented and I said, "How many different versions of porn chick stories are going to hear? Yeah. Like you should probably direct uh, interview a director that's got hell of a lot of more stories yeah. from behind the camera and experiences of the world yeah. rather than." No, no. And they're like, "That's a great point. We'd love to have you on." Like, exactly, because then you can get more perspective about the industry and actually more human story in a yeah, sense where like, right like, you know, I reached out to a couple of the, um, uh, adult magazines about, hey, if you guys want to do an interview with me, I'm totally down because um, I have a lot to share, not about my life, but what happened. Yeah. Because I know so many people that live unhealthy lifestyles, mm -hmm. like myself, not from drug or party use, it's just over, overworking yourself. Absolutely. And not letting your body, when your body warns you about certain things, fucking listen. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to power through this. I'm going to start eating healthy. I'm going to be fine. And then that day came. You know, and, and it will always, we're all going to die. Yeah. It just depends. You're going to get comfortably sleeping in a painful way, whatever it may be. But our body is all shutting down in some ways. And, and you know, like, and none of them were, like, interested. And, and I'm just thinking, Why? man, um, you guys could you guys could actually do a human story yeah. about people in this who are human. 
dealing with human shit. Yeah. But no, you rather interview that girl who just did her first anal scene. And there's gonna be 10 other girls tomorrow that are gonna do their first anal scene. Yeah. What's the fucking difference? It's the same story, man. Right. It's just a different face. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't know how to do an enema. I'm not gonna have to eat for a day. And I was so nervous. Great. That's a generic line because because that's the truth. Yeah. But if you actually do a human piece on someone, do it on the girl that's got OCD, ADD, what, whatever. But she's got a kid with autism because there's a few girls in the industry who do a lot of autism charity work because they have children with autism. Damn. Interview those people. Yeah. You know, interview them about that. A human piece a week on your big platform means so much because it puts a human spin on the industry. Because mm-hmm. right now, the spin on the industry is like, these are all people just whores who fuck. Yeah. And we watch them and we jerk off to them. Right, right, right. They're still human beings. Right. You know, and there's, let me tell you, most of these people that post all this shit on social media, they live paycheck to paycheck. They're not Jeez. fucking millionaires. Right. You know, like, but social media, that's why I have a shirt that says uh, fake lives matter. Because social media is all fake. You yeah. put out what you want people to see. Right, right. You're not right. going to put it out there. Yeah, there are some people that shouldn't put out stuff like, my boyfriend did this to me. Go to the fucking cops. Right. You know, like, right. like, like, you know, social media is not a judge or an executioner. Yeah. It never should be. Ever. You know, and, and because it's all over the place, yeah. you know. No doubt. For whatever we all think of Donald Trump, whether you like him or hate him, that motherfucker took advantage of social media. Right. President. Right. You know, like, yeah. that's, that's what it came down to because people are just like, okay, it's social media. The Rock, 300 million, uh, uh, what do you call it? Followers, yeah, right? That's crazy. Like, he could be president. He literally could go on social media and go, "Vote for me. I'm ready for president." And yep. He'd be president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this is true. And uh, because it's all people just want to sit on social media and, and imagine these things with these people. And um, at the end of the day, it's all bullshit. Everything but but if, if yeah, you know, like everything. Um, so but if bullshit. you make it more of a human thing, that's what yeah. like you were saying. Like you like you like to sit down and talk to people to yeah. learn about as human beings. Yeah. Same thing with me. Right. I've I've been arguing with my friend who's like, her whole thing was like. Um, at first she wanted to talk on the phone, then she didn't, and then uh, it was just strictly friends. And then one day I was like, you know, like, I get lonely and bored because I'm like fucking, and I was still at the hospital, I think. Um, and I just reached out to her, and she's like, she's like, I don't like to just have meaningless uh, conversation. conversation. Right. And it really affected me in the sense where I'm like, why isn't conversation with me meaningless? Because I have so much life experiences. People, I mean, I'll get people on set, like some of my friends are like, tell people this story, tell this, because they know the stories I have. Yeah. have. And I'm like thinking, I'm a wealth of knowledge to you right. that in you're trying to build this brand, you could literally use me as a fucking guide to how to do it. Yeah. Because I watched my best friend, Christy Mag build a fucking giant brand. Right. By herself. So I watched her to do it the proper way. Yeah. In the most polite, nicest way. And you know, like you were saying about like, oh, you the like, talent doesn't control what they're shooting. She did. She said there's not one scene out there that she shot that she is embarrassed by mm-hmm. and regrets. Because if you take control over yourself, over your brand, over your look, over what you're comfortable doing on camera, that's the most important thing. Right. Because there's not one big, there's not one check hmm. in porn or anywhere else. If there was, I would do it. Yeah. But there's no check that's going to, okay, you do this, and it might be gross or painful or whatever else, but you could retire off that check. Cool. Well, okay, maybe. Right. There's no such check. Right. So why do shit to compromise yourself? You're the man. You know, like, I don't... You're the man. I, I, like, I don't understand. You, you, I get it, man. This is... I could probably talk to you for another two hours, but I got a flight to catch, brother. What time is your flight? Uh... A couple hours, I think it is. Like I got, I got still gas my car up. Oh, no, no, it's like it's, it's, it's a rental. You know, yeah, it's a rental. Yeah, yeah so. Jeez. but you know that that's uh, the the human part. People forget about. No doubt. You know, like I had a Russian documentary crew come here. Wow. Followed me for three days, um, and uh, I they're like, so you know, can we come to your house? And I'm like, yeah, only one stipulation. They're like, what? I go. That Vladdy Daddy, Uncle Vlad Vladimir Putin gets to see it. Yeah. They're like, well, we can't promise. I'm like, hey, if he sees it, invites me over for dinner, and then kills me afterwards, cool. I got to meet Vladimir Putin. I'm done. Right. Life's, life's good. Let's so, see. so Vladdy uh, Daddy, Vladdy huh? Daddy. You know, no. so so they, they didn't think it. It was funny because they're Russian, so they don't get the the jokes of like, right. what Americans or Russian Americans like myself right. would say. But uh, uh, yeah, you know, like, and I was an open book with them, and they were like, wow, you like you're willing to share? I'm like. I have nothing to hide. Yeah, you know, like, transparency you know, like, is awesome, man. Before social media, you know, when people had blogs, my blog won Porn Blog of the Year Award because I was, like, so honest. And I was yeah. just posting. I posted one blog after my ex broke up with me. 
one of the big directors in the industry was a good friend of mine. She texts me. She goes, you need to delete that blog. I'm like, why? She goes, you're going to ruin your career. Because I was like so upset. Mm. I posted this blog and like fucking trashing some of the things in the industry. Wow. And she's all like, dude, you got to delete that, man. I was like, no. And then. I'm like, yeah, I probably should. I still mm. have a career that I need to take care of, <laughs> you know. Man, uh, man. man so. how can people follow Ivan? Man? Um, my YouTube channel is Sliven.tv, which is S L I V A N dot TV, mm. and Sliven is actually um, my real name is Slava. My mm. direct name is Ivan, so it's Sliven. It's like a mixture. Of yeah, that's sweet. I can do it. You know, and uh, my Instagram is I A M Sliven. Uh, I am Sliven. I am Sliven. Um, my Twitter is I am Ivan Triple X. I hate the whole triple X thing. I wish it could have just be I am Ivan, but, but you know, <laughs> so, but, uh, uh, that's pretty much it. You know, like I have my website, I am Ivan.com. I, mm -hmm. I'm really, I haven't updated in forever just cause I don't have time, but yeah. it's got some bunch of cool shit on it. Yeah. Um, my YouTube channel has got a lot of like trailers to stuff I do. That's clean. Okay. Um, and, and fun and behind the scenes stuff. And, uh, yeah. And then, you know, like this whole, um, hospital thing. On Instagram, I post it every day. Yeah. Uh, just like one one or two videos. Keep people up to date on what's going on. Uh, when I was on morphine, when I first was in ICU, mm. and on morphine and had my uh, um, dialysis, man, I was gray and I was posting videos and mm. I don't remember what I posted, but my friends were like, dude, you posted some fucked up shit. I'm like, yeah, but it came from the heart, so yeah. I don't give a shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to, they were like, oh, you said some mean things. I go, what did I say it was mean? I guess like, and I remember, what what, the, what I was going through and why I did this post, I, mm. didn't, I haven't looked at it, but the gist of it was, you know, like if you're friends with me on Facebook, you know me as my real name. Why the fuck do you call me Ivan on Facebook? My name is Slava. If you're posting, hey, Ivan, da, 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 and then there are my friends and family on there. No, I'm Slava on here. Yeah. So my whole message was, <laughs> was like, if you know my real name, don't fucking uh, call me Ivan yeah. in personal situations Understood. call me fucking slava and, and and then i guess this is something like if you call me ivan i will block you or right? like and then my friends are like i go but yeah but that's how i was feeling and that's really right. that's how i feel and that's to be respected man. yeah you know and, and so, it's very that's why i do what i do man because I, I like to find people just in their own space you yeah, know what i mean yeah. right or wrong god damn it you know this is i'm not trying to be offensive but if i did it makes me human yeah, one hundred percent. Because it's like each, like I said, like each person has their own journey. That's they it. have their own mind. Like, was, like they, they, you played it so perfectly. Like all this means to me something. Every little thing that's up on my walls was put there for a reason. Yeah. Somebody else walking in here might not get it. Right. The moment a girl walks in here and gets it, that's wifey material. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. so unfortunately, most girls that get this stuff are crazy. So yeah. you know, they've had they've had crazy girlfriends, but. Uh, like my dad walking in, he doesn't get any of this shit. He yeah. grew up as an old fucking Russian, man. He doesn't. He yeah. had nothing. He had a potato and maybe like a piece of bread or something growing up, you know? <laughs> so it looks to him like, oh, your walls all colorful and got dumb shit everywhere. Because this what makes me happy. Right That's what on. makes me king. You know, doesn't, no explanation either, brother. You can follow me. I'm John Agnew on uh, Instagram, Mike Dope Official, Facebook group, Mike Dope, uh, all that happy stuff, man. YouTube. Uh, Bike dope on YouTube, but again, uh, I let my energy lead me, you know what I mean? And I just go with it. Um, the whole idea, what we do, we do, is to encourage people and to inspire, but namely to listen, right? Because we're all the same, we're all connected, intervenously, intergalactically, inter something, isly, through something or somebody, you know what I mean? Um, and I appreciate you, Ivan. Thanks for letting me, thanks for letting me in your house. Yeah. Slava. Yeah. I'm Slava. sorry. That's all. My full name is Vyacheslav. All my friends just call me Vyacheslav because I thought it was fun. Yeah. You yes. know, you're, you're close to me and mine. Do you remember the word Vyach? No. Vyach! Yeah, I know. Remember the other commercials? What's up? Yeah. What's up? Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm going to stick with Slava. Yeah, that's, that's, that sounds good. Yeah. I, I prefer Slava. So I appreciate you guys. And as always, thank you. I appreciate you. Man. Thanks, man. This was great. I told you guys, man. Slava. My boy Slava, man. He's good. <laughs> He's good people. He's a hell of a dude. And he, he was a testament to me because uh, he didn't have any experience of whatever he did, man. He just learned his way, you know, and, and found his way just went with it, you know. And that's that's the best part about what I do is I meet so many people who 
listen to that intuition within themselves and go forward despite whatever this life is giving them. You know what I mean? This dude is from Russia, for God's sakes. How many people have you, can you say that you met actually from Russia? I can. I can say it. That's awesome, man. So, again, like, subscribe, comment, follow, share, and however the rigmarole goes, man, more importantly, listen. We're all the same. We're all connected. This is, you know, this life is short, man. So, as meet as many cool people as you can. White, though. John Agnew coming for the belt, baby. Easy.